Hi there, thanks for tuning in. Welcome to Goodly. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the solution to the questions that I gave you in the last video, which is where I spoke about three questions. And this is the time to solve those three questions. And if you did participate in that particular Excel versus DAX challenge, a big shout out coming to you in the end. You posted a blog comment, a YouTube comment or sent me an email. Thank you so much for that. And if you actually don't know what what question am I speaking about, you should actually go take a look at the last video. And I would highly recommend it because otherwise this is just another YouTube video that you're watching and wouldn't probably have a lot of impact. So if you actually want to understand that, oh my God, this is the reason that, you know, uh, why I use DAX or why I should use DAX over Excel formulas, please, please go bear the pain of solving the three questions that I discussed about in the last video and then continue watching this one. Nobody's going anywhere. I'm waiting. You just go solve the three questions and we'll then proceed ahead. All right, so I'm in an Excel file. This is where I have already solved the three questions using Excel formulas or pivot tables. And I have also solved the same questions using DAX in Power BI. Let's just compare and find out that why do I think DAX is a whole lot better as compared to Excel. Now, my first reason that I'd like to give to you why DAX is better is because DAX actually will take away all the rough and patchy work that you put in Excel in order to be able to get to a maybe slightly more complicated solution to a question. So if you remember the question that I gave you was to find out how many unique bikes were sold every single month. And that question actually involved rough and patchy work. To be able to help you understand, I'll have to take you to the data. So if you maybe go to the data here, in the data, first of all, to solve that question, I had to create two columns. The first column that I created was for the sales. So I had to actually multiply the quantity into price to get to the sales. That was one. And the second column that I had to create was a VLOOKUP on the product ID that I fetched it from the products table. And I placed it here because if I'm trying to use a column from the other table, I have to have that column in my data set to be able to make a pivot table on that. The second problem that I had after I created these two columns was that the granularity of this particular data was by the order. If you don't understand what granularity means, it simply means that what is the uh, single row of your data mean. So one single row of my data mean one particular order. You could have many orders in a day. The first thing that I had to do was I had to summarize my data by the month. And then if once I summarize the data by the month, and then I could actually find how many uh, products were there and then find the count of the unique products. So here is what I did. I created little patchy rough work in between. So I made a, like a rough sheet here. And in that rough sheet, I dragged my months from the pivot table. I dragged the product ID from the pivot table. Uh, this is in rows, okay? And once you kind of drag anything into the rows of the pivot table, it obviously gives you the unique values. It doesn't really duplicate that. And then I applied a filter for bikes because I'm just trying to find out unique bikes. And I also applied the filter for price. Price should actually be greater than or equal to a thousand dollars. So these two filters are applied and then I had the month and the product ID. Now these are unique products every single month. Now on top of this, I could have actually written a sum if formula or I could have you know, made another pivot table on top of this. So I kind of copied this data on the side. I actually made another pivot table on top of that. So this is another pivot table which is made on that rough patchy work. And once I had that, once I had the unique products, all that I had to do was count the number of rows there are in that product column. So that was unique product. All right. So now you've seen that in order to get to this answer, simple question, right? In order to get to this, I had to do like a step of patchy work, which probably I'm not going to show it to anyone. I will probably hide this sheet. That is like a little mess in Excel. Now, why don't we actually take a look at the DAG solution and how that is a whole lot beautiful, sophisticated. All right. Take a look. All right. So I'm in Power BI and this is where the same thing year and the month. And I have the same answer as I had it in Excel, but this is done using DAG. So why don't we take a look at the DAG? DAX code that I have written here. My objective here is not to really explain you the DAX, not to give you an understanding of the DAX, but to give you an understanding that why DAX is better as compared to Excel formulas. This is not one of those videos where I'm teaching DAX. I'm just explaining the difference between Excel and DAX. All right. So here I am. Uh, I have written a distinct count function and that distinct count function actually finds the unique product IDs. But after applying two filters, the first filter is bikes. And the second filter unit price should be greater than a thousand. And once I have this DAX, I actually drag that in my pivot table and it just works beautifully. There is no rough patchy work that I have put in in order to get to the solution. If you actually want to take a look at my sales table, it's the same sales table, no columns, no funny business here. I mean, I don't have any columns or any hidden table anywhere. All right. So that is the beautiful solution using DAX. So the, my first uh, kind of suggestion is or point is that DAX actually takes away rough patchy work that you actually put in Excel to be able to get to the answer.
Okay, moving on to number two. So my second reason why DAX is better than Excel is because DAX actually creates portable calculations or portable measures. What do I mean by portable? Is that you write the calculation once and then you can actually fit that calculation in any kind of pivot table and get the desired answer. To be able to explain that to you clearly, I need to take a look at the second solution. So why don't we actually take a look at the second solution, which is where I had to find the 100,000 days every single month, which is in one single day, the same was one hundred thousand dollars all right so just take a look at the month here uh, the data here so if I just go to the sales table in this data I actually had to sum all the sales by the order date on the first Jan and then find out if the total of that sale was above hundred thousand dollars or not and then do it for second Jan then do it for third Jan so on and so forth again the data granularity is one problem uh, that I had to solve so let's just take a look at the rough work that I've put in in order to be able to solve that question all right so the first thing that I did was I actually made a pivot table here so in this pivot table I drag the date of the order date right here in my pivot table and against that I had the total sales value this is where I am summarizing the data because the data is at the order level I'm summarizing it to a day level once I kind of have this at the day level maybe I can write a little if function to find out if that sales on a particular day is above a thousand dollars or not and if that is above a thousand dollars maybe I'll just write true or otherwise I will write a false it's a very crude way of solving it but that's what I have done and once I kind of have a true and false all that I can do is I can actually filter out the falses which is where the sale is not above hundred thousand dollars and I can just keep the trues inside so that's what I'm gonna do and on this data I actually made a pivot table on top of that and then I actually got to my answer so here is what I have done so if you take a look at the answer sheet I first of all applied a filter and this pivot table is made on the patchy rough work that I have put in in between so I'm kind of reiterating my first point and then I have found out this particular solution right so that's what I have done all right now why don't we actually take a look at the same solution in Power BI and I'll explain that why the solution in Power BI is highly portable I mean the, the code that I've written is highly portable and it's going to fit inside any kind of pivot table that I put in all right so why don't we take a look at the hundred thousand dollar days DAX code that I have written so this is the hundred thousand dollar days DAX code all that I'm doing is go inside every single row of the calendar calendar already has one row per day right so that problem of granularity is solved and then I say hey why don't you find our total sales and see that if that is more than a hundred thousand dollars and this is actually going to give me a table and then I actually write the count rows function to just count the number of rows that are in the table so don't worry about the DAX once I wrote the DAX I actually drag that in my pivot table uh, right here in the matrix and now this solution is actually portable now what do I mean by portable is that if I change the layout of the pivot table or maybe ask a slightly different question this solution is absolutely going to work so if I actually get my products table and I get my category right here which is bikes or whatever category so I just do that apply a filter and get that right here and if I apply a filter let's say on bikes or clothing or components or accessories I'm going to get to know that how many hundred thousand dollar days there are for bikes or for clothing or for accessories and things like that so the solution has actually become portable or suddenly if I don't want to take a look at by month if I want to take a look at by the quarter all that I will do is get my quarter from my calendar and replace the month and this solution is now suddenly giving me the quarter wise answers for that same question that I had so the solutions that you actually build inside the DAX which is your measures they are highly portable so the, so the DAX calculation is automatically going to adjust to what the pivot table is asking you as a question and give you the revised measure how does it happen that's slightly technical but we, as of now we're just discussing the benefits of using DAX versus Excel formulas so I hope I made that point clear all right so my final reason that why should you consider using DAX over Excel formulas is that DAX can actually work on very very large data sets so you might have argued for the first two points hey you know what I can write very slick very sophisticated Excel formulas that involve no patchy work points given to you so far so good you could have also argued with me that uh, I can actually design formulas using some if count if or whatever array fancy formulas dynamic arrays that we have now in Excel that I also can nearly make my formulas portable to whatever questions that I'm asking you could still get away with that but you cannot get away with large data problems while working in Excel so Excel has the capacity of maybe just a million rows and you cannot go beyond that so 
Power BI and DAX actually help you get beyond that capacity and you can actually work with a lot, lot, lot higher data sets when you're working in, in Power BI and DAX. So that's a very, very important reason and I wanted to bring that up, that while you're using DAX, you don't have a limitation of working with just you know 10 lakh rows. 10 lakh rows is still in upper capacity for Excel. Even if you work with 500,000 rows of data, your Excel most likely is gonna crash if the data sets, if you have too many columns and too many rows. So, but obviously let's just discuss the the final question as well which is where I had to show in a pivot table across the months how much was the total sales that we actually made and how much was the sales that we shipped every single month now that is something that you cannot do it in a single pivot table so here is the work that I have done it in Excel so I've actually made two pivot tables so the first pivot table actually shows me the order sales that means how much was my sales against the month and this is where I've actually dragged the order date in my pivot table and this is where I have actually dragged the ship date in my pivot table and actually shown the shipped sales and maybe maybe what I can do is I can hide these two columns and so that these two you know um, sales values come next to each other and that's the little patchy work again that I have to do in Excel to be able to get to the answer that I'm looking forward to do. But in Power BI, I have written a very simple DAX formula. So if you just take a look at total sales, it is very simple, multiply the sales with the units. But if you actually take a look at the total shipped sales, I've actually created a secondary relationship between the ship date and the calendar date to get my total sales shipped. So that's another DAX code. And this is again portable. So if I actually wanna take a look at uh, sales by month, by clothing or by bikes or by accessories, how much was shipped and how much was sold, I can actually do that. But that's gonna be slightly tricky in the pivot table that I have created. All right, finally, Finally, a big, big shout out to you guys for everybody who participated and left a comment on the blog or on the YouTube. Zuhaib left a comment. He actually started asking his own question, but that's okay. Tarino, Smith, uh, big shout out to you. You started it. Uh, Atul, Sandy, Ali here and Prabodh here. And we also had a couple of people leaving a comment on the blog. So we had uh, Jose, we had Torino, we had uh, Steve. Steve is actually a student of mine in the DAX program. So big shout out to you. Sujit, we have Nilesh, Puneet, Prashant. We had Torino again, Smith again. And finally, uh, I left a comment just to ask for your comments. So thank you so much for being such a sport and you know participating in this little DAX versus Excel kind of challenge. If you're still not convinced about uh, using DAX over Excel formulas in the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of curate the problems that I've solved using DAX, which were far more sophisticated than the ones that I've given to you now and show you that what I was able to achieve using DAX that I just don't even know that if at all I'll be able to achieve using Excel formulas or not. But remember the three reasons. The three reasons were the rough and the patchy work is gone. The DAX formulas are far more portable and you can carry it through any pivot table if you want to have the different result of the same DAX measure. And the final is actually practical, which is where you don't have the limitation of working with only 1 million rows, especially when you're working with Excel, you can just take off that limit and just go beyond that as well. All right. Thank you so much for sticking around. Thank you so much for participating. And I will see you in two days from now, which is where I'll discuss more complicated problems that I've solved using tax. I'll see you soon. Bye.